Hello everybody and welcome to episode 44 of Competitive Magic with the Carnies. I'm your host from Italy, Andrea Menducci, and joining me we have Javier Dominguez from Spain. Hello everyone. And once again, that's it, because Anthony flew all the way across the ocean to join the old continent. He's in Spain already, isn't he? Yeah, I think he got here like today or something, yesterday. Yeah, like he got here recently, so... You know, probably sleeping at this moment, at this very moment. But he's not he's not in your house, right? No, no, no. He just landed. He's gonna be like see seeing the stuff a few days and then we will just meet. I'm gonna meet him before though, but then we will just meet the team and also just go testing testing house, the best part of the PT, yeah? Testing house, yes indeed. Uh, for those of you who don't know, me and Javier have been doing last time and also this one, we're doing a camera, so you can go on my YouTube channel and you can find uh, the uh, our faces, uh, that's, uh, meanwhile we talk. Uh, I've had a lot of good comments about it, so we're going to keep it going and, until we can. Uh, as long as, uh, alongside our faces, you're, you're also, you also can see you know us scrolling through the decklists that we talked about, which is, I guess, kind of useful for some people. Uh, but, you know, still always going to be in the uh, podcast board. And as always, we have a patron. We have uh, a new patron uh, is uh, Boba Chow. And uh, welcome, Boba Chow, to, to, to our patron. All right. So, uh, Javier, last um, last episode, we talked about your you had uh, an important tournament this weekend, the uh, Legacy Showcase uh, Playoff. And uh, how did that go? Did you did you get the Mox invite? I did not get the Mox invite once again. I I made top eight though with I played uh, I played Dimir Shadow. Um, I obviously didn't have a lot of time to test, but I played some games before, and I spent a lot of time on Sunday, like the whole Sunday. Uh, Baku Baku ninety one from Magic Online. I think the names might sound familiar to you. Uh, actually came here my place and we just you know he helped me build the deck whenever we had lunch together talking about the deck so i ultimately ended submitting a blue black shadow deck with four thrall of cassad whatever dam uh what it was called just making it the shadow deck a little bit of a reanimator deck as well trying to make the deck a little bit more like a little bit like a hybrid between that because that's a combo right like if you get a turn two six five cannot good luck it's a combo in a way so I, I just played that, that deck, and honestly, the deck was fine. It was not great, I guess, but I felt good about the deck playing the tournament. At the end, the top eight, I just got a bad matchup where my deck also didn't function. I had this classic, like, I needed to brainstorm into, like, action and just draw, like, three daces and die. Like, you know, it, this this sometimes happens in Magic, and I just, like, lose, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've lost against the 4-color pile, yeah, Mango showing you on the screen, like, the 4-color pile with rings, Moxayam, and Uros, like, binding swords, yeah. like, definitely not a good matchup for Shadow. I uh, obviously could have won some games, because, you know, Wastelands and the Palantir and the Cyborg and the such, but certainly, I did not expect too many of these decks, there were not too many of these decks in the tournament, there were a lot of, like, Grixis and Shadows, uh, but yeah, I mean... You know, it happened. It obviously sucks to lose, you know, a tournament you're trying to win, but like, it was a good tournament. I enjoyed playing Legacy. The games uh, were actually quite fun. I played like a very, very intense match against C. Francone in the round three, I think, against Rixis. We played Shadow against Rixis, which is so tricky because it's both tempo decks, but they're built differently because a Shadow player, you have to like be careful with the life totals, but also if you Shadow a small. Your, your creatures are not large enough to win the game, so it's like this kind of balance where you have to, you know, make sure you don't get grinded, but also not of tempo. And yeah, I mean, I had some cool games. Uh, I do like how Legacy looks right now. It's honestly it's been fine for me since the iteration thing. I mean, I, it's been fine. Um, I, I still feel like if Chalice of the Void is good, the format sucks. Uh, Chalice of the Void is still too good for my taste, but whenever there's no too many Chalice of the Void or I guess Ancient Tomb. Uh, I still find the the matchups very fun. Uh, yeah, so uh, we were talking a lot about uh, what decks to play and things like that. And uh, I kind of was like, I don't know, you should play Shadow because I think that Blue Black Shadow is just very good deck right now. There's no more reason to play Expressive Iteration. And, uh, you know, you are a very good Days player, Days Wasteland player. So I'm, I'm glad you ended up with Shadow. Uh, you started 4-0, which was a great uh, 
start and then I don't know you either lost or conceded round five it doesn't doesn't have doesn't matter that much and then unfortunately you lost to uh Arcani in the in the top eight but still you know again very good run and very very close to that uh, <laughs> that goal that never seems to realize the, the, the that mocks it doesn't that mocks yeah, play it's off. never happened yet but it's kind of funny in a way you know like I, I I like how the Mox keeps being a tournament that I cannot get to play even though I'm trying. But I really see the bright part of it. Like, you know, they're like how it doesn't matter how much you play magic, there's always a thing you ha you don't have, you know? Like there's always more to play for. I don't know. I I I don't know if I'm making sense there, but it's kind of special to me and I don't mind having this there. So it's like a goal I'm I can just chase. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember. Similar thing for me was the GP Top 8 for so long. For those of you who don't know, I yeah. I played in over 70 GP and I got the Top 8, the first Top 8, only in the last one, GP Bologna 2019, and then they kind of like shut off GP entirely. So I feel like I got my goal and then they just shut off the GP circuit. Basically. Maybe that's maybe you shut off the GP so we get the Top 8, you know? But yeah, so every GP was always exciting because I could get my first top eight and then I would lose lose terribly, so, you know, next time and things like that. So maybe that could be the same to you eventually. You make the mocks play off and they'll uh, shut off Magic Online. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or, or not. Like, if, if I don't make it, it's fine anyway. Like, I know that if I make it, it's going to be like, just play another tournament and that's fine. So the more special thing is like just getting there, you know, the sensation of having the goal. Like, at this point, I feel like, to me, it's actually more important to be like, you know, this is a goal than the tournament itself in a way. Because obviously the tournament is cool and it's large, but it's it's a tournament. I know how like now I know how they are. I've been there a lot of times, right? So but this this kind of like goal where I would like to complete this path and get there, that's kinda of exciting. So whenever I keep busting again and just keep being like, yeah, brainstorm into three non lands, die. Uh, I, because it's always legacy, to be fair. I have never been super close in another format. I think I it up with one standard, but like it's always legacy. Um I'm always like, yeah, you know, it, it sucks, but also, you know, it's good to have this thing there. So I'm um, I'm gonna try next time. Play we'll play the playoffs again. We'll not go for the leaderboard, but the showcases, yeah, I like them. It's it's good. Yeah, the the the, the mock showcase final this time the, the the eight player event will be legacy the constructed <laughs> format. Yeah, no more modern and 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 cube and vintage cube. I don't know what format of the cube will be if it's legacy or vintage, but yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, legacy cube, legacy constructed will be the dream for me. Like if I ever qualify for a mox, I mean that will be like for me the perfect one to to qualify. You know. Yeah, I was uh, I was. I was following you from the Carnies Discord, of course. I was uh, not. I didn't do anything this weekend. Uh, it's way too hot to to, <laughs> to do something over here, and I spend the whole time, uh, uh yeah, just uh, at the beach and following. Actually, I did. I did something that was very cool. That reminded me of the past. There was the uh, SCG coverage this weekend, and uh, on Sunday night, uh, it was very. It was, it was amazing watching the. I watched the whole um, top four, six. I believe it's top six. They they called it. Yeah, they had top six here, and uh, it was it was very cool because the way it lines up, it's like you know the time zone different. It's perfect yeah. for the people who go to sleep at around like midnight. So you just get to enjoy the whole uh, the whole coverage. You get the top uh, eight, yeah, in the sleeping time no, from your bed, I, 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 and um, it was a very cool one. The team of Ben. Uh, Vian Boog beat the team of Corey, uh, Bread, and Noah Walker. It was, it was good magic. And also a great coverage team. I believe Dominic Harvey and Andrew Ellen Bogan commentated. I mean, commentary being good, it's, it's also, it makes it makes the show very good. I, it, it makes a whole difference to me. Like, it does change the whole thing. Uh from my perspective for sure like if, if yeah they were like so knowledgeable of every format they were just moving through pioneer legacy and and, and modern knowing exactly what was going on it's actually and, it's hard uh, to know all the formats enough to be to know what's going on well actually being like good at you know talking and you know i didn't watch it but if that was the case i, I think that is a very good job you know like when, yeah, when this happens I, I think it's great 
Yeah, the coverage was brought by uh, Anzi D. He's been doing this this job where he just struggles to events, arrange, uh, I think, through Discord with, uh, with for example, Andrew and Dom. Uh, and yeah, I mean... He's, he's been like thanking all the uh, Patreon and people that, you know, support the coverage. Uh, that was good. That was uh, definitely a good Sunday evening to start uh, to, go, to, go, to go back and play some magic after a weekend of relax. And, you know, not that much magic because I actually tweeted about it. Something like during the weekend, I just forced myself out of my house because I feel like if I'm at my house, I have to think about, you know, some ways of making content, what I'm gonna do the next week to make content, you know, and like get things together. So, which is kind of work. I mean, it is, it is, it work, is work. So it was just, a workaholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the book. Yeah. <laughs> and all just so, like, you know, this weekend I stayed home only, only to, to sleep basically because otherwise it's just so hard to. That, that's logical, uh, right? That's yeah. something. Like, if I stay at home, like, when, if I have to take a break from magic, I cannot really take it from home. I just go out. Like I'm not. If I stay two days in my home, I'm at some point gonna be like, you know, thinking something about magic. So I think that uh, that's a good thing. By the way, also about talk, talking about this tournament, it was cool for me for a personal level to see like players like Gary or, or Brad, you know, being back because Brad, you know, I played with him for a lot of bunch of PTs we prepared together, and he kind of quit playing. And I've been talking with him the last PTs. We talked like some minutes each tournament, and it's good to to see you know him going back into a tournament and just being able to to do well. You know, like also Gary. Uh, yeah, know, I it, mean, uh, they all faces the familiar faces. No, uh, I, it, it's <laughs> it was good, good for me to see on Twitter they were you know doing the thing, just having this tweet like, yeah, we are eight one, whatever. <laughs> I like that. tournaments are just. Are just the best. They are absolutely. That's it. No, they are. That's they it. are. No, no. That, that, like, yeah, like ma magic is an individual game, so we have this thing where you know you go to a tournament by yourself. You sure you practice with people, with teams, but at the end of the day, it's just you versus your opponent, and your team doesn't matter anymore when round one starts. But the team events instead is great because you still very bond to your team. You can still help them. You can still like joy uh, with them if. Like honestly, the best feeling, like of a team tournament, is when you lose and your team wins. Like you just finish that round and you're just so incredibly happy that it's just a normal win in a one versus one tournament will never give you that that feeling. And you actually lost, you know, <laughs> like your your match. And and that's something that I just uh, we, we we did the team together. It was me and you and Alfred at the Four Seasons last time, and uh, I had that happening to me twice. I lost the round, and, and you guys won, so we ended up winning the round. And I was just so happy, like so happy. I remember you being like, "Yeah, I lost, but we won." <laughs> yeah, I was just getting doomsdayed in 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 the in the vintage seat while uh, you and you were winning. So. <laughs> But over, uh, yeah, over. So I'm always, I'm always so happy to see more and more team events, and it's cool to see that SNG Connect is like 20, 25k uh, tournament, which is that's uh, large actually. That's pretty big. It's a lot of, it's a lot of money for magic tournament these days. Which you know, you, you, you know how it goes. If you travel, there's not. It's very hard to come across these tournaments, and and being team is great. First place, yeah. Next, yeah. First place, seven five k. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Next. Uh, Next weekend in Barcelona, the GP, the, the sealed GP is going to be a 75k uh, uh, sealed event. Yeah, that, like that's... Prize up to top 96. That's very cool. I'm, I'm doing a lot of sealed in practice for that one. Uh, meanwhile, you'll start the Pro Tour on next Friday. Not this one, the next one. I'll be doing the, the sealed. We'll, yeah. we, we'll be both cool. opening cards at about the same time, I assume. Hopefully open yeah. some bombs. Yeah, hopefully on some bombs. Uh, again, next week we're not going to do the podcast because we'll be both in uh, testing houses. Uh, I'm here with Team Handshake. I'm with Team Worldly Council, uh, which is the team uh, held by uh, Zen Takahashi. And uh, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot, very many, very many cool people and nice people I've had the pleasure to stay with and chat with this, uh, this week's um you know, something that I really enjoy testing, like the testing house is great, but also just having a team to just 
talk to constantly leading up to the event. It kind of like leaves you up with a void when the event is over. Like you don't have any more somebody to just wake up and check what the Americans wrote in the Discord while you were asleep. And it's just always fun to do things like that. Sometimes it's from my perspective. Sometimes you wake up, you see the Discord, and you're like, "You're gonna, I'm gonna check the messages," you know, and just say like. 423 new messages and you're like okay i'm just gonna get a shower and then i will check them because i'm not gonna remember anything <laughs> if, if, I, if it's like more than 100 in a thread i just like delay for for the next task like <laughs> sometimes yeah, sometimes I, there's I, I a lot say, of information i just say feeling in our discord sometimes you and anthony just talk forever and it's like 200 messages and it's just you two talking back and forth. <laughs> I mean, I just, it's a discord yeah. it's meant to be used to talk you know like, no, no, I know, I know, I know. It happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and I, mean, um, I want to play with Team Tournament now. No, like this week, yeah, I was left no, with like, for you sure. know, I mean, I mean, I know we played the Forces on side event or whatever, but I actually would like to play like a large team. Like I understand yeah. they're not great because some people actually struggle at finding teams or whatever. Like team events always leave some people not playing the event for that reason. Not us, but I understand that. Uh, I mean, a friend, a friend told me, explained me this, like. And that makes sense. If you're like you're not very much inside the community, but you like to play competitively, uh, team tournaments are less appealing to you, right? Um, so or might or might be less appealing to you, because you know you're less less likely to win a tournament if you don't have like connections for you know to make a team or whatever. You also might not just not be like a team player or whatever. You know, like uh, there's a lot of different reasons. That said, I would love to have like this tournament like this. Uh, you know, in Spain, Italy, or whatever. I think we will d easily go, right, Mengu? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this event, they had 381 people, if you take all the teams, the multiply by t by three, which is, a, I think, a sizable amount for the SCG event, which, you know, I think it's uh, above, uh, might be above average for their um, for their numbers. So Still... I think that there was... They were accepted. Like it's not that oh, it's a team event, so they got less players. I think they might even get more players. But it's overall. it's less people than for seasons or whatever, right? Still. Yeah, but in America, I feel like they always have. Uh, whenever they do these tournaments, always less people than uh, the LMS or for season. I don't know. What, like what they do, have we, huge do you think that championships? That, what do you think is that? Maybe it's because it's not in the same place again and again. Because I think that helps a lot. Tournaments like the four seasons or whatever, mm -hmm. the impact. I think these tournaments. Are, are helped by the fact that they are like you know each think, same place every time i think that the reason is that in america they have uh, even local events are actually large like you might have i don't know a 5k in a in a store or things like that whereas in europe you just don't have that in europe you have big events only once in a while and you have to travel like yeah. take the, the plane and the flight and whatever whereas maybe in america they had you know many good events throughout the uh, you know the country this weekend and you just you know i don't want to take a flight to cincinnati because i have another 5k in my in my store so i think they in america they have it was had like a lot um yeah this is my this is my theory maybe if you disagree you're all uh, very good to share it with you in the youtube comments or no, but that, that, that makes, makes perfect sense yeah like i'll yeah, here it's more like Either you play like a popular game or whatever, or you play like your twenty people, five euro local store tournament. There's not exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I guess we don't like. I mean, community. I think people here don't actually like to play large tournaments in our like you know every Saturday or whatever. Like if you make a store, even a big one like in Barcelona or whatever, if you make a random Saturday thirty euro tournament with good prices, maybe people will not like to show up. Maybe they're they're just like prefer to have like this cheap tournament perhaps like low prices or whatever because they just want to spend their Saturday. I don't know. Like maybe maybe we as a culture want more to just spend a day other than just fighting for prices. I don't know. That that, that makes sense? Yeah. I feel like when they raise the prices, like the LMS costing hundred euro or just GPs when to cost seventy euro, a lot of people don't come anymore. Like for example the GP sealed mm -hmm. is like it's like two hundred euro basically because you have to play the entry fee and you have to pay the tournaments. And a lot of people I feel like in Europe, not that happy to play to pay that amount, but I guess that's just everywhere, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I don't it's... think America they're happy to pay. Well, I don't know much this event costed, but I remember when I went to SCG Dallas, it was eighty five dollars. 
but so, you're getting good yeah. like if I th I, my perception is that yeah yeah, yeah. Of, if you get you pay more but you get a ba a good ratio on the price that's fine i will say right like that i mean for me that would be fine and for all for a lot of players are but some players will not like that even if you know even if the proportion is better for them they just don't want to spend this money because you know they just want to spend the Saturday out of work and just having fun with playing some magic. So they don't know to feel, they don't want to like be like you know playing for a topic of a big tournament. They just want to play this store tournament. There's gonna be five rounds to just go back home, and that's fine. Yeah. I think that's very this popular here, right? Yeah, this is something that me and you disagreed with as well. Like, I don't really care about winning two K or one K or five hundred. I just like to just be in a tournament the whole day finishing the tournament and you know split and go home because i'm happy I, I i did the thing and and this is uh for example you know popper Geddon as well we, we we split the top eight I was, I was super happy i believe they also split the top eight at ms bologna like it it's i feel like it's something that I, i'm happy to do and i'll be keep on i'll, I'll, I'll keep on doing it as long as I'm, I'm given the option whereas you know a player like you might disagree and i, I know a lot of people out there uh, just just want to get that first prize, like the whole thing. They don't want to, you know, settle on uh, a split with other players and, and things like that. I don't know if we have talked about this in the podcast. Have we? I don't remember. I know we have personally talked about this a lot, but I don't know if... In... There is... There's no Anthony, so we could never talk about these topics with Anthony because, you know, it's money. <laughs> and money, <laughs> money, everybody. Oh, today, today on stream, I was like all about... Uh, you know, Soren's ransom and all the finance around it. It was fun. <laughs> MTG finance. I mean, it's yeah. never. It's actually not about the money to me. It's about the matches. Just to be clear, like I am one of those players that get like for me the best runs to play usually are the matches for top eight and the finals. In a way, like I, I just feel like playing these matches where there's like. A stake that feels important to me. Maybe, maybe the stake is just playing the topic or whatever. That's that's very intense. And the later you go into a tournament, the, the more intense these matches become. So for me, playing the semifinals of a big tournament, that's that that's already a price. Like I'm getting a, a life enjoyment that's very high for me for playing that match. So if I split, it's like I'm not splitting in an even way because I'm losing the part that I already am more passionate about, you know, just playing that semifinals or playing that finals. Uh, so that that's why I don't really like splitting this kind of events. But I understand, like, if you're playing for the price, like, if your pricing is important to you... So it's actually the opposite. It's not like I care about the price that much. I actually care about the experience more. So it's never like, you know... Like, because if, for example, like, there was, like, a big slot... For the winner or whatever, like a wall to slot, I, I would not mind actually splitting prices in that situation as long as we get to play full forced. Like, I also don't want to play against people that do not care. Like, these matches, the, the one of the special things these matches have often is that, of course, you're, you're tense because you're playing this final with a big prize or whatever, but your opponent is also playing that big final, so they're also caring a lot about this. So, you, you're getting the, the, the best of your opponent as well, right? So, um, I, I, yeah, I don't want to explain too much because I think we already talked about this a little bit, but, like, that's for me... I, that's the difference between me and Mango, but it's not about, like, the price. It's about, like... He, like, he said, like, yeah, he make top eight, he's happy, but I just leave. But for me, it's like, I make top eight, I make th my thinking is, like, okay, we're in top eight, this is where the actual best part of it starts. Like, it's not the end, it's, like, you know, what happens before the actual best part, which is explaining this top eight match or whatever. Or I guess the win and in also counts, but, you know... It's not mm -hmm. that that much, but it's definitely not about like the price itself or something. Because most of the events have like smallish prices, even though sometimes they feel intense. Smallish in terms of like you know they're not like life changing or anything. It's not like I'm not talking about winning a PT or you know I'm talking about like just making top it in in one event that we play. So I mean. I don't really play that many sure. small events right now, but if I go to four, four seasons, seasons, yeah, like for me yeah. playing the winner in for four seasons, it is an intense match. And it's yeah. it's large enough for me to be intense, but it, it would be as intense if the price was a little bit higher, a little bit lower. It doesn't change the intensity for me. Uh, let's yeah. let's share this. Let's share the story of last per season. I, I don't think we did. Uh, we were both six and two, and uh, and they had prizes for top thirty two. And you came to me. I'm like, are you uh, are you IDing the last round? Because 
our tiebreakers probably we cannot make top 16 so if we id we get top 32 lock and i'm like oh i didn't think about that i was just going to play so i just sat down at the table but i think i, th I said to you something like no, oh usually i don't you say yeah. i'm not gonna do i'm gonna play that's what you said yeah i said i said i usually i usually just i usually just play because whatever right yeah you said I'm gonna then, play like, whatever. I said, <laughs> that's what you yeah, said yeah i sat down I sat down, I checked the standings, and that was very true, like what you said. I, I, if I win, I never make the top 16, and if I lose, I go out of top 32. So I just like, you know, it makes a lot of sense. That's ID, and I made like 25, I put him at 24th. Whereas you, <laughs> I believe you played. I did and, play, uh, yeah. Yeah, tell, tell. But it was a very good and match. You were... <laughs> but my, I was playing like the Sky, remember... the Sky Control leg, and I was playing against Jorion, which is like a bad matchup. And, you know, like, I actually wanted to get better with the Jeska deck, so I felt like playing a bad matchup in a round 9 of a tournament was very good training rounds, so I decided to, you know... Yeah, but, yeah, but I, re I remember I, I stand up, and I, I, I see that you're shuffling, and I come to you and I say, oh, I drew, and you go like, ah. <laughs> no, but it was a good decision, I think. That, that was a very learning match. So, too bad, yeah, too bad they, they uh... printed the... The org about masters and then all my test, all, all my testing goes away. But I really like that the SK deck. Like this, yes, I was ready to play the SK control deck in the in the showcase. To be fair, like that's why I tested so Although, much. Although the the GSK deck, I don't know if you saw it, but the the team winner had uh, Arthur Arthur Marshall, I believe was is his name, and he won the thing and he posted on Twitter that he went six zero against that shadow. I mean, the, so the, the, this deck beat, used to beat shadow so much. That he can't believe that maybe orcs are good against this deck, but maybe they're not as good because the matchup was good enough. So maybe this guy was fine against Shadow. Like yeah. this guy was like Shadow. I mean, and that's for seasons actually play against Sweet Shadow, and it's just like a very good matchup because they just like run into your plan. Yeah. I don't think the staff is very good. It's not very good against orcs and not great against the rest. I mean, it's not that bad against orcs, I guess. But at this point, I feel like maybe there's a way to build Jeskai that doesn't really lose that much against the, you know, like the orcs. You know, like, you know, throw all spells now there. you also playing Paper, so you can play Comet over the Emperor, which is not very good, again. <laughs> um, I mean, there's probably a way to build it, uh, you know, to build... Also, you have Landmoons, if you're going to play... If you, like, all the orc decks are kind of weak against Landmoon in a way, so there, there's yeah. some things to do. If I had more time for the mocks, I might, you know, there's such a world where I was not qualified for the PT, and I would have tried a lot, and I maybe would have ended playing something like Jeska deck, adapted to beat orcs. But the issue is, these kind of decks, if you don't surgically, like, craft the perfect plan, if you go a little bit off, you can just destroy the deck. And then it becomes, like, semi-dysfunctional in some cyber games specifically, and that's something I didn't want to happen to me, so I just stick to the tempo deck. But I can see how you could beat a control deck that's actually good against the orcs decks. Not because the orcs are not going to be good against you, just because if you make the deck hard enough, but bad enough against you, their deck, orcs are not like orcs are good, okay? But they are not Narset. This is like something I have learned this weekend, uh, playing especially the leagues before the mocks on Sunday and the such. Like, it's not like. Because with Narset or whatever, if you have an Narset to play Ponder, the game's over, right? Like, it, it's, you know, useless. But if you're playing, like, I don't know, a combo deck, or even a control deck, like, you have the Orcs, sure, you play a Ponder, so what happens is Ponder makes you lose one life and put a 1-1 one -one counter on the creature. Does it sound that bad? Like, is the difference yeah. between Night Whispers and Divination that huge to... Like, obviously it's a, it's a difference, right? But, like, it's, like you're taking two life most likely, uh, it's not, let's say, I, I overstated, like, I th the impact from, the, that Org has against decks, like, combo decks, or even control decks that are, like, good enough at killing the creatures, is way lower than I would expect, this is not like a tempo matchup where they, you play a brainstorm against Orcs, you're dead, like, I had the games against Show and Tell, like, I had Orcs, like, they play brainstorm, I play Org, fine, they take three, and then tap and kill me. Like, like it's not... Like, orcs is, are not Narset. They are, like... Maybe this is... You think it's wrong, but they felt a little bit of, like, a one-sided uh, Eidolon of the Great Rebel, or, like, 
you could call it like a two mana shield red, right? Like it's between a one sided Eidolon or a two mana shield red, but it's definitely yeah. not like a Narset. It's not a Hull, hull Breaker, hull, hull Breacher. I never, I never hull Breacher. Hull Breacher. Hull Breacher. It's not a Hull Breacher. We have, have we have played Hull Breacher in Vintage, and we know how the card works. And on paper, you can think Orc is like a Hull Breacher. It's a two mana Hull Breacher. It is not a two mana Hull Breacher, and the physics, the, the physics of their game, its gameplay, it's very different. Because it's actually not as good as it looks uh, at attacking the the card draw engines. Like, if I'm brainstorming into a Wrath of God, I take three, that's fine. But if I Wrath of God, it's over. Like, if I pound it into a Supreme Verdict, and then play Verdict that turn, your Super Bomb Orc that you have you have warped your deck to play is dealing one damage. Two damage total. That's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's no big deal, you know what I mean? So that, that's I, th yeah. I think we're now on the surface of really at least myself understanding the orcs. But my impression is that the card is kind of overrated in that way, f in terms of like metagame positioning. I, I don't think that really translates into what we saw in the mocks. Like some like for example, Binu was playing three, of course, in the painter, but that makes sense. But also like the second place finisher thing with uh, also played three only. I acknowledge it was a good card, but also like a liability for the deck, uh, in a way where it's good to have it, but also if you, like if you rely too much on them, they are not a whole breacher. Like they will not change the game dramatically against Kandrews, and they will mostly all like you're never gonna get the you know like it's not easy to get the brainstorm in response orc. Like your opponent's already gonna play the brainstorm's main phase, right? So it's not very easy to actually get them that way unless they're forced to do so. And, you know, the cards that are good against your deck are good against orcs if you're playing, like, an aggro deck. It's different if you play, like, you know, depths with orcs. That's different, in a way. But, like, it's, to me, I think, like, the complications of the card in the metagame are going to be lower than it will look. Like, this is not exactly a Ragavan type of card. It's a very unique card, so I'm not really exactly to de decide, like, how I feel about it. But, more or less, those are my thoughts on the card and how it impact the game impacts the game and also how it impacts legacy that's my uh monologue that's a about, good, uh, uh, about the orc sorry <laughs> yeah that, that was a no that was great like you know maybe some people don't play legacy but like you can see that in modern a little bit as well with the orc right now like some decks just uh you know can you can take some damage off of it but then like you still make your plan in you go on and in legacy that's just to the next level because as you said exactly like there is a, a show and tell deck in the uh where is it in the in the 11th place and you know you can easily uh, just cantrip actually speaking of that deck that deck doesn't play any ponder or, or brainstorm so maybe they actually played around uh, the orc in that way but like they, they, you, you could cantrip into uh your show and tell omniscience emerald and just doesn't matter but yeah so that's a very good point uh, i love to listen to that one a card that basically rotated out of legacy is the beautiful strix yeah like absolutely. your shadow yeah, deck yeah. used to play your shadow deck used to play beautiful strix and now you just can yeah. never do that anymore yeah i think it's soft man like the like the cards is like too bad against orcs like even the cards like delver drc if you don't play whatever you, you, you know you can get them like to good place but by strix is like sitting there forever yeah, I think Strix is gonna be like unplayable as well as long as the orc is what, legal. What about, I say, like, what about Brazen Borrower? So Brazen Borrower in Tempo Dex is not exact like the face card, like the three one card is obviously bad against uh, the the orcs for obvious reasons, but it was never like the matchups where the three one is very important are not very likely the matchups where the you know like where they play orcs. Like, Borrower is there in the main deck to be the best answer you can have against both Mortal Region, Chalice of the Void, while also being a threat against combo decks. Like, it's the very best card and specifically doing this job. Like, against an orc decks, you will... Like, you're trying to never play this card because that's your answer to Mortal if you play main deck in the, both Velver and Sh Shadow decks. So it's it's only bad against orcs. If you they play Mortal, you bounce Mortal, and then after that, you play the Borrower and they play orcs. Which is kind of a small window, and it's a card like ideally you never played in the mirror match as a creature that's like until it's very, very late. So I, I it was, that was not a very big concern, as far as like you know it's just a card like you don't want to draw there, but if you draw it's fine. But I think the cards are still very legal. I like Strix. 
I will say. Because I have, um, I've played a couple of leagues with uh, Grixis Delver. I even wrote an article for CFB, which I'm now scrolling through. And uh, I, 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 I started with uh, Jarvis U deck, and he had two power in the sideboard. My thought was that they basically come in and very often, mostly against decks that don't play Orc, or of course, like if you have to bounce like a Chance of the Void or a Mark Lage or whatever. But I feel like maybe main deck that weren't as good as they are bad to be Shadow and then Mirror matches of, of Orcs. Well, that's the difference here, and the difference is the Shadow deck is way more vulnerable to cut decks like the Chalice deck than Delver is. Because a, lot, a way to beat the Chalice decks or the Blood Moon decks or the Ancient Tomb decks with Elver is like you go land Delver on the plate and, and maybe they go Ancient Tomb Chalice <laughs> and you just like let it resolve, attack for three three times and there's a spell and forward spell and you won the game. Like we, we've been there a lot of times, right? We've both been there with DRC and Delver playing eight one drops. That's an actual fine way to Chalice, even though it doesn't look like that, it, it is. Plus he also plays the Force of Negation. But in Shadow, you actually lack that ability. Like you cannot play one up on the plate you have like none at all. So it's actually impossible to go under the chalice, which makes it so you have more pressures to have an answer to it. That's my reason to play Borrower in Shadow while I will agree actually and not play it in the Delver deck. I, I wanna uh, ask you a question about the Badlands because Jarvis was playing one Badland in the space of the fourth Vulcan Wasteland saying that basically you want to have an additional red or black source for example on turn two sometimes you might need double red but i felt that four wasteland is just let me check how many were you playing but i'm assuming you were playing four yeah so i feel like wasteland is just a card that if you're if you if your deck decided to play it it must be a four off because urza saga is so good you need to waste it and you know when i was playing my soul tie deck i remember people played three but i went immediately up to four and I feel like playing four wasteland ended up with like Delver and DRC just just is wrong. Maybe you wanna cut a fetch land for a badlands if you really like badlands, but yeah. So my, my idea is to play four wasteland. What do you think of Well, funnily enough, I agree with you both. Like, I think Wasteland now so Wasteland, I've always been a big fan of Wasteland. I think it's one of the reasons for this kind of act to be good. But specifically now, it's even better than before. Because Bowmasters make the mirror match a little bit heavier. You know, like before it was a crossing one drops, but now there's another two drop in the mix. It's more tight plus bowmaster. That's eight to seven two drops, which makes the decks quite the decks quite heavier. So wasteland's much better. So I will not like to play a four like less than four wastelands in a tempo meter like ever. I never liked it, but today and nowadays I think it's even more important than ever. So I will absolutely lock into four wastelands, but at the same time, because of how the bowmasters work, they try to draw games. Like, if you play about Masters and your opponent plays about Masters well, you kind of, like, lose big time, right? Like, you, you get destroyed. And that, and that exchange, that's very bad for you. You need something like a Resolve or Murtai to to be ahead and after that situation. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to, to get back into the game. So, what happens often is, like, you do like the game because you have two mana and you have Orcs. But if you play them and your opponent goes, like, Orcs and then Days, and you'll have the Days as well... Like, they just you use this a lot. So in practice, we often see, like, more long games, but we still need the mana. So now, before Delver, you can be with two lands and you still have a great game, but now you kind of want to hit the third and sometimes the fourth land, even though it's not exactly to cast a big spell, just like because you can cast multiple spells on those big turns. Like, maybe you're going to go, like, Orc, they go Orc, and then you raise them in response, and then they use their Orc, or whatever. So I agree you need more mana, uh, but I also agree you don't want to cut ways on. So what I did, if you look at my deck list, I just added one more source. In terms of like, I just add a troll in this case. But if it was yeah, not a troll, troll, yeah. So I have, lands, I have so. twenty lands total instead of nineteen, and that's how I solved this issue because I really wanted both things to happen. I went through this process and I was like, you know, orcs also make it so the game's done. Me like. So it's easier to actually get into a position where you're just so ahead you will not lose, even if it's not very fast. So flooding is less of a concern in that sense. Um, so that's why I managed to put one more land. And in the, specifically in this deck, I will probably cut like probably the second Delver of Secrets for like a land. I, like I will put one more mana source. I think the mana sources now are like more important than before because Orc is not only a two drop but also a two drop that actually tends to delay the game more but be demanding a mana at the same time, you know? 
it could be can, Lightning Revealed. Can be, it can definitely be yeah. Lightning Revealed. But I think Legacy, it's going to be rough to cast it for five. But it's still, like I said, as a blue land that pitches, you know, it's good. Yeah, actually, it could be Golden Revealed. Because it can also search for the, you know, either dual land, I think. Yeah, right? so, to the listeners, uh, Lover Revealed is the... Is the um, this 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 new card that is popping out in Popper and Modern. Uh, it's a five mana sorcery, draw three cards, island cycling one. So just like Javier played the troll for copies in his shadow deck, but obviously played those because you have uh reanimate. So you can go for the uh, troll turn one, turn two, just reanimate. Sure you take a lot of damage, but you have a six five uh triple menace in play. And you know, Lower reveal costs five, and you said it's very hard to do. But like, we we all cast our cast force. Yeah, really yeah, it, you could cast legacy. it, and if you cast it the legacy, it's gonna be great. No, I actually think this is a great idea, Mingo. Like, I will probably cut one Delver for one Golden Revealed, and see from there. Yeah, so yeah, I think this is now a nice section into 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 modern where we can I I can talk a little bit about Lauren Revealed and how much this card is now showing up in modern in like. Almost every deck from Blue Red Murktide, Blue Black Murktide, and, and Team Rhinos have all these decks done well this weekend. And this the, today I was playing Blue White Control uh, on stream. I played, I got paired against uh, Il Nano on Blue Black Control, and he just kept casting Lore and Reveal at some point in the game, and I was just dead. I was just dead. Like I just lost to Lore and Reveal our cast, you know, both games, and I felt like, well, I can also be cast be putting Lure and Reveal in my blue white control deck. And you can ask this question now to like every deck you're playing in. It's just like especially if you have Force of Negation, Subtlety, in Legacy, uh, you have in this deck, uh, Force of Wheel of course and Force of Negation. So Lure and Reveal just just does it all. I, I posted a screenshot on Twitter the other day where my Lure and Reveal was R casted, was pitched, and it gave me the double blue when I had Blood Moon in play uh, and I drew it later. So just it just did it all in a single game. I have, I have three copies of it. And so it's definitely a card that is just a common. And uh, we've seen how the Generous End and the Oliophant, which are the green and the red one, are being huge in Legacy in Living End. Uh, the black one sees played in, in, uh, in, in Legacy. The blue one is seen played in every format. The white one, unfortunately, is just... Probably the only one that's never gonna see play, but poor, chi- I don't know. poor chickens of the north. They are not uh, the eagles of the north. Maybe in popper. By the way, there was also the popper showcase this weekend. Uh, yeah, the, the last, yeah, we can the talk. Last, yeah, the last important popper tournament for a while, I will assume, because we can talk. It rotates from the mock schedule after this, so we can talk about mm. this also. Yeah, we can talk about this also, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, briefly mention um, the, um, the 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 modern shakeup that have happened in the weekend which is mostly this new deck that are as a re as a rise and which is playing also sore Ran- Soron's ransom this card spiked from 50 cents to 10 euro and it's probably going to go up even more than that it's a manufacturer fiction aka express also known as expressive iteration of instant speed this is how i've been calling it on my stream it's a clear card advantage it puts your opponent into this like how do I make the piles? If you put in my mis- my make mistakes, you can get three cards in turn three sometimes. Uh, also, they don't know your hand. Sometimes, pe- sometimes when you cast this card, uh, you might know this with like you know uh, the the four mana card. What was it called? The one where your opponent chooses gifts are given. No, 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 Karn. The four mana card. Oh, ca- oh, uh, big, big, big boy Karn. The, <laughs> the one you tick up and you yeah. reveal two cards, and your opponent gives you one. Like your opponent doesn't know your hand, so sometimes they might. People always assume you have lands in hand. You just always end up just playing Soren's Ransom. It's always gonna give you lands, and uh, like it's so good to cast Soren's Ransom when you don't have lands in hand because yeah. your opponent is gonna always put lands with the weaker cards. <laughs> get some lands. It's just. Yeah, and also like you can level your opponent, but also you can get leveled. This is it's very tricky, very good. At the end of the day, it's gonna give you two cards, and in formats with like Mystic Century, like Legacy, you can put it back on top. In formats like Modern, you can use this card to refuel your uh, Force of Negation subtlety uh, deck. So yeah, I really like Soren's Ransom. Uh, this deck has been uh, updating over and over. I believe that uh, there uh, it it did well in a couple of events and this one was actually the version i copied the one by soam bag lade uh it actually the deck comes from talisker one of our uh patreon and he has been a uh, very high on the the whole deck list it started with totsies and now i cut totsies i really do not like totsies so i'm happy that uh, they moved away from it this deck is also playing children the apocalypse which is one of the few 
Um, modern was just one of the few formats that was not touched by uh, shield Red, but now thanks to the ring, you actually get to do some real value with it because you have like a ring on three counters, you're afraid of dying to your own ring, you have all these cards in hand, you just play shield Red, top the ring, your opponent plays Terminator or whatever, you counter spell, you just gain eight life, the game is over. So shield Red is important in this deck because it just closes the game. Basically, it's like Omnath, but uh, you know, obviously you can't cast Omnath in a blue black deck, so. I like this deck, and I'm expecting this deck to be... I mean, I say this all the time, but like, the best Merktide region deck. Might be, it might be, you know, it was maybe Blue or Merktide, maybe Team Orionis, or maybe this blue-black deck. Um, yeah, I think that uh, this is definitely the biggest uh, takeaway modern, and again, next uh, week we're not gonna be here, and then there will be the Pro Tour, so we're gonna come the next episode of the Carnies with Javier and maybe Anthony, and we're gonna be focused on modern. 100% talking about everything and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great I look forward to that a lot I will finally be able to speak about modern <laughs> yes of course um, yeah so uh, let's talk about uh, uh, let's finish the podcast with a little bit of popper talking shall we I have a surprise for you uh, uh, I'm I'm gonna buy a popper deck I actually bought it I will what is it I, like? I, will, I will show you once it's a uh, it's, it's here I just you know are are you also are you also coming to Rome in November for the popper getting? I don't know, but if I have the, a, if the I... next pro tour, it's in like in February, so yeah, yeah, very yeah. I think you have very few. Excuses. I might actually, I might, I might, Mengu. I mean, I don't need excuses to not go to tournaments, but I so might. I, I like that at, event. It's it's a three days event. On Friday, there will be a team popper unified. Wow. Okay. On, maybe, maybe, uh, I, maybe I come. <laughs> On Saturday, it's a two days event, so the main the day one, day two, and it's in a very good location. I hope it's a hotel Mercure. So there's like the hotel, like a four stars hotel, and then location in the same uh, in the same thing. And uh, yeah, I think I mean I actually I don't even know if I was supposed to say this all things, but I hope so. I hope I was. I hope yeah, I, was. I hope you were. I don't know. Just make sure they're legal to be said. Yeah. But... Uh, but it's yeah, fine, it's, it's um, fine. I'm just doing some like free, free publicity, free advertisement. I'm sh I'm sure they'll be happy. Uh, anyway, I might, I might. I'm just gonna have a popper deck. Like I feel like you know, I mean, they play. So apparently, they play popper here in my town. There was a tournament in my town. I didn't know about it. Uh, the other day, like uh, there's some magic community here. There's some play paper. So might as well just have a deck just in case I wanna go play with them. You know, so I don't have to borrow decks every time. So that I mean, they're also cheap because it's popper. Like MTG five, it's, it's like very cheap. So yeah, know, how like when you said your town, you mean Palau or Barcelona? Palau, my town is pa Palau de Plegamans. That's wow. where I live. Palau, yeah, yeah. There are popper players here in Palau. Also, commander players. They also play Pioneer a little bit, but like mostly popper, I think. I, I know there there's some small community here. So you know, I thought like might as well just have a deck just to play with them sometimes. That's cool. So. That's cool. You know, that, 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 that's actually why I bought it, but figured you will actually like the, that I'm gonna have. I'm gonna own a physical popper deck. You know, maybe two it, even. Oh, actually, so you didn't say you didn't tell me what it is. So it could be something like okay. It's it's not countries. going. It's not going to be uh, blue red, uh, blue sorry blue black because this deck is a normal. Like okay. I already probably have most of these cards. Like if I okay have, then. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on uh, Altar Tron. You will know next time. I will sh actually show it to you. I will probably post it instead in the Carnage Discord. Yeah. Did you see, Did you see that the blue black uh, terror deck got upgraded with Lever revealed as well? That's Something what he played in the show. Uh, that's what he played in the showcase challenge, actually. And what I I told here, I think I I messed up a match. Like what, like I was five one and just throw yeah. away one. I, I thought that yeah, was very but, the, but that's too normal. Like, I already but, own all those cards, so you know you will yeah, see. You the, will see. You 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 guessed. No, okay. Maybe you guessed right. Maybe you guessed wrong. You know who knows. Yeah. So the the winner of the showcase is back off on uh, blue white Kage. It's the list that I played like last year, basically. Like this is no new cards. Like one casting to the fire. It's crazy to me. It's crazy. I mean, also a lot of popper topic. Like the topic decks didn't have that many new cards, though, did they? Like we had like the learning reveal blue black, of course. That's a big upgrade. That's it. The Infinite decks had the same. You know, there's like mono white deck also doesn't have any like Lord of the Rings card, anything. Just like the same. It's always been. 
Papur is this time Papur was not broken, apparently. Supposed to any other time they print a broken card that's good for Papur, this time it's just fine. Which is uh, I believe Affinity is no, no, Affinity is not playing any Lambas. No, why will Lambas be a good Affinity? I don't know, gain three life, burn is good. Maybe I, mean, I, I still don't, don't get why Lambas will be good, but in overall, in the gain format, some people play them. Yeah, I think any life is good in Popper, but so it's always card advantage. All right. Okay, so you don't play you don't play you didn't buy Alter Tron, otherwise you would play Lampus in that deck. Mm, why? No. I oh, I'm getting some clues here. No, 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 I'm not that kind. You you guessed, you will see if you if you you know. If. Yeah. <laughs> no, the the so yeah, this 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 blue white gates, eh? No lore reveal as well. This deck looks like a fine lore reveal deck. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not really though. I think Ronda Weld, if you don't have any synergies, it's not like a good that a good yeah. of card. Like this is a tempo deck. Like you wanna play your cards on cure for whatever. Ronda reveal is good if you have well, Terror and Terror or whatever, like you know. If you don't, it's not as brainstorm at least. Like it's good with brainstorm, but it's not good with I mean Squad of Hawk, it doesn't really want you to play Lord Revealed. I will not play Lord I mean maybe one, but I actually think that the white chicken might be better in this deck than the Lorien, if you think about it. Six, the six mana. Yeah, you pump the cats the and the hawks. Yeah, I mean, if I had to choose one, I would play the chicken. Yeah, the saying. Anyway, by the way, I, one, one small brief um, comment is like, one another pioneer tournament, this team tournament, another like blue white lotus field there on top. Just saying, uh, that's a. Uh, and, yeah, I, you know, but, and then some of the yeah. on the high tables like mono green yeah, and blue I, white yeah. seem like the most successful decks in Pioneer in this weekend. Just saying like this. Yeah, we didn't talk about the change. We didn't talk about Pioneer, but yeah, we didn't uh, talk about, I believe uh, Karsten posted a uh, an interesting uh, Karsten posted a uh, an interesting tweet where he uh, ranked up all the tweet uh, where he uh, ranked up all, all the results the, uh, from um, the original championship and he put them all together. Um, the and the most successful the deck of that better. was Rack the Sacrifice, successful which also ended up was winning the, the um, which also ended up team of Anthem in the the, the, um, the seat of Rack the Sacrifice team of Anthem overall the, the out of the over hundred forty out of a thousand four hundred matches had a fifty seven win percentage matches at the original had championship seven win so percentage that's a lot this is at the original super, championship super impressed level. like this is the so the sample size like. Is huge. The, the, we're the not talking about like the sample size of Rakdos mid range. We're not we often talking about, talk like, to the sample size of Rakdos mid range. You and Anthony don't tell, tell me to not play it. Rakdos mid range have a sample size of all over four thousand matches, and he's had a forty-eight win percentage. Four thousand matches, forty-four thousand, and he's had a forty-eight win percentage. This seems this should be like you know again a good level of play. This is not like this should be like you know the arena of play or things like that. This is the regional championship of. Uh, like that. This the, is the regional championship, the, the Pro Tour cycle. So uh, this data the, that I, I can add it to the, the show notes, cycle. but again, this data I'm showing it on YouTube. It it's definitely a very good data for Pioneer if you're still like interested. Definitely a very good data for Pioneer or to RC uh, the next one. RC Pioneer. So or to RC, this is definitely uh, an important thing. Obviously, will change with the new set. Definitely an important thing. Obviously, will change with the new set. The Aldrain, Wilds of Aldrain, I believe. Uh, it's going to be legal drain, for the uh, drain, next regional championship. So be uh, things might change, the, uh, but I think this is a very important change, sequence of. Uh, so again, a very for, for those who are not watching, we have Rack the Sacrifice, then we have Mona Red, Attack Red. Attack Red. Yeah, 70 matches sample size. It's nothing. And then we have Azure Spirit, super high. Azure Sloach is also very high. Of course, Mono Green, Mono White Humans, and then it's kind of like some small decks. And then overall, this is... But yeah, most of the decks have on below 50% win rate. Most of the decks have on below 50% win rate. There's one thing here that we can read from this data, and it's like... Surprisingly enough, like most of the different, like the edge sacrifice gets from Ragdos midrange to become the actual best deck, it's mostly just because of the clash, the data clash. Like if you swapped the matchup between midrange and sacrifice, midrange could be the best deck, and the other way around. Like the, the if you s look at the rest of the metagame spread, the matchups between sacrifice and, and midrange they're kind of similar if you combine them, right? Sorry, I don't understand what, what are you talking about. What I'm saying is like the Sorry, difference between like Ragdos Sacrifice is like the best deck and Ragdos Midrange is like a forty-eight like the biggest loser in a way, after creativity or whatever. 
but they are actually very similar if you combine most of the matchups if you ignore the mirror match but it is oh. a mirror it is a mirror match where oh. it actually like where sacrifice gets the edge over mid range and since they are very like you know like the, the, that's the, that's a huge difference that, that, that's just yeah. like that's what that makes sense right because sacrifice slowly became sort of similar to like adding thoughts and the such it just became similar to ragdos mid range but it still kept the upper hand in the mirror match um i wonder though like if that's the case this will be less true in the later stages of the Arceus compared to the earlier. I assume because in the later stages, the Ragdos decks will actually have better tools and sacrifice that didn't they did not have in the beginning. So this difference might be even be larger, actually. That's in that sense, I, like real difference. I have, a, I have a question. I have a I, question. So I, have, I remember a few podcasts ago, Anthony said so he chose to play blue white control to be the Ragdos sacrifice. Here the data says that Ragdos sacrifice is sixty four. Here the data says that Ragdos sacrifice is sixty four. Do you think is that the list of blue control, 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 control were bad? Because blue white control had a good overall percentage. Like blue white control is fifty one percent out of a thousand five hundred matches. I have an answer for this. I feel like five hundred. I do. I do know the answer to this one. So the question, if you. If you go and look to the sacrifice deck list nowadays, like they are like for example the first one on the top in the tournament. It's like four thoughts is three claim to firstborn. You know? And the cyborg's actually like the cyborg is morphing the deck into like six discard spells and some threats that are hard for control. This is not the sacrifice deck we had half a year ago. Like the addition of Thoughtsies and cutting cards like claim the firstborn are lucky witness. Not all of them, but like some of them. That this this is just what I said one minute ago. Like the deck now, sacrifice deck now looks more like a mid range deck, like a Ragdos mid range deck, that has replaced some of the fillers like She Aldred and the such for the as much like as many sacrifice cards they can put. But these still keep this mid range um, shell. What this means is the meta game distribution is actually very similar. Like, it's going to be a little bit worse against Devotion or against, like, Control, but the whole shell is still, like, similar, and the postal games are going to be similar in a way because they don't have the same 6 6 card spells and the such. And that's why, like, Blue Control used to be good against Sacrifice, but nowadays, since Sacrifice is not... Like, Sacrifice is not Sacrifice as we used to know it before. Now it's, like, a hybrid between Sacrifice and Ragdos Midrange. Once you see Sacrifice as this hybrid all of these will make more sense to you. Not only the specific matchup against Control, but also other matchups, like the Monogram Devotion matchup being like a f almost a 50%, which was not the case one year ago, you know? And that's that's the explanation. That's why it's fine against Blue White Control. Like, if you play Blue White Control like now against Sacrifice, you're going to have a fine game one, but not great. And post-board, it's going to be horrible because it's going to be like, you know, they're going to have like these Thoughtseize into Duress plus Thoughtseize plus Fable or Omnix with his hands and you're going to be like dead in the water pretty fast. And that's why Mengu. Thank you. Yes, um, nice explanation you, there. Yes, um, nice yeah, explanation we are there. Uh, um, looking yeah, forward we are, to uh, the, 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 the new set, I guess, to, to bring back Mono. The, 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 the new set, that's the only thing I can bring play. back Mono. Rapid 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 Rapid. <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm not <laughs> missing Pioneer much. <laughs> After playing Draft, Modern, and Legacy, usually it's easy to miss the formats you don't play. Like, I miss the standard. But I'm not missing Pioneer as much as it could look I am. I think it's um, like it's cool to analyze metagames and I love doing it, blah blah blah. But yeah, like yeah. Yeah, same here. I'm good with I'm still legacy. Waiting on that, uh, yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, still I'm still waiting, waiting on, on that, that email uh, uh, from yeah, the, I'm still waiting uh, on that know, email. Legacy uh, European uh, Tour to tell me if I'm qualified or not to the RC. But to tell me I'm not that's like, to the RC. Okay, that means I don't have to tell me about Pioneer. No, every week we will talk about Pioneer here in the podcast until two weeks before the tournament. So you will have to listen about the Pioneer, you know, Anthony winning it's all the okay. PTQs or whatever. It's actually fine. It's actually okay. fine to brainstorm it's actually Pioneer. Fine. Because, uh, it's know, actually fine. Looking at that fine to brainstorm Pioneer. Because, uh, you know, yeah. looking at that but anyway, fine. I don't think I announced it on the podcast here. But anyway, I don't think I announced it on the podcast here. At the, on Sunday of the Pro Tour, so on day three, on Sunday of the semifinals and finals, 
I'll be doing, doing the, the semifinals Pro Tour Watch Party. So I'm here if you're not playing in the semifinals and you want to watch. So I'm here if you're not playing in the semifinals you can you can come to the to the other side, I guess, of the Magic Con Barcelona. To the other side, I guess, of the Magic Con Barcelona. Are you screen? And instead of hearing Paul Marshall, hearing Corey, Paul Marshall, I don't know, Cedric Alisvier, I don't know who's commentating exactly, but instead of hearing them, you'll be hearing me talking. And Philippa, and we kind of hearing me, you know, commentate live not only the plays you know, but also just live interact with the, us the okay. plays the viewers uh, the people are real time so i kind of want the viewers they, wizards uh, people message us so that they have this idea they, of turning the live show into actually a live show of turning uh, more than just a watch party we just you know more than seats and the coverage going so an interactive right you mean interactive experience right like you will this is what's happening yeah exactly yeah exactly people they wanted yeah, to exactly. make it more uh, yeah, exactly. of a, a live show rather than just because uh, uh, um, they, they, they said it in um, uh, in Minneapolis. They, so they, when they we were both there, uh, they had it so just like we seats there, and screen. Uh, they had uh, whereas now like they want to seats and screen, actual uh, people uh, interacting and engaging. And it's going to be like the the last show of the of the week. It's going to be like the when the finals end of the of the week. The whole just kind of tournament start to end and things like that. The whole just kind of be like a farewell to the event. I appreciate your invite, but I hopefully we will play in top four. You know, so I will not be able to attend. I know. That, that, I know. No, I said. I said if you, if you're. That's, not, that's the idea. I know. No, I said. I said if yeah, you. Yeah, it'd be nice to not, see so. you there, of course. Yeah. I mean, I will nice try. I'm also. I'm also happy with last time. You know, I, mean, I, I, I can bust this one, and it's okay. But I'm gonna try my best yeah. anyway. It's less pressure is. Yeah. I don't know if less pressure is good or not. Mm. I think it's not good for me. I think I behave better when I have more pressure, but I do have less pressure. But I'm still excited to. To do well because I still love the sensations. Um, maybe it's good. Maybe it's a good thing actually. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I always try to have as little uh, pressure as I have possible. I always try to have as little uh, pressure. I also don't, don't do well. I, I like I 85 50, percent pressure. Don't pressure. <laughs> Not too much, yeah. but high enough. It's high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I think we should be good for yeah. the day, right, Mango? Yeah. We are. Yeah. yeah. I think we're gonna. Yeah, interact with us. You can comment on YouTube, with us, Twitter, can, uh, or just uh, comment also, on uh, YouTube, become a, a supporter on patreon.com slash carnies to join the Discord. On That's it. Carnies. Yeah, I, I think well. this is stats discussion. Is good. We could do this more. Well. Just have the win rates on the screen and discuss them. Let's discuss, like, you know, to also to the listeners that are not watching as well. But like, you know, we can just. I think this is very good. It can be good content. You know, trying to understand why things are going on here. That's probably a good thing. Like as an exercise yep. to reading the metagame, you know what I mean? But this is something we could do. Yep. Just sit down and, and see the, the stats in the podcast so we can actually like talk how we're I mean I'll, let us know if you you guys like do people like this this specific part of the of the podcast. Yeah, these articles brought by Frank Karsten on yeah, the these articles uh, Mothership by website Frank are just great. Like like he he just, uh, Mothership he's just like, just great. like, he like just, so, so he's good just at like, these things with data and so, such. So like, good at these things. What, analyzes. But well, the idea stuff, here, yeah, like, Frank, Frank, Frank brings on the articles and, what's happening. Yeah, Frank, and what we can do is try to understand the, the, cape, like the, the layers of why it is happening, which is, I think, could lead us into having a better meta knowledge going forward i will yep. say like the questions like you ask from example for yep. this or like those questions are questions to that are good to you know make to yourself so you can actually like think about it and that's that's a good thing yeah this article is amazing unfortunately a lot of work yeah, putting this, this article by the way yeah, yeah. this article is yeah. a lot of work yeah, yeah. This, article. Article. yeah. This, is, this is not a, a half an hour article for sure yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. As, no as a person no. that writes uh you know <laughs> As half an hour article is a three hours article. Uh, you know, you can yeah. definitely tell. Half an hour article is a three hours article. Yeah. You can definitely tell. Yeah, because yeah, I said like three is the co- I will be con- the yeah. conservative side. Cons- yeah, like yeah. maybe three, but yeah. like not not one also. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. All right. And as always, you know the feedback at Mango Zero Nine. You can also tag me in the feedback if you want, but. It's funnier when you all attack him, so we can troll suddenly. But yeah, uh, do the do bye bye. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>